Hello, and welcome to Cryptid by State, Pennsylvania. I hope everyone had a happy and safe Halloween, or Samhain, for those of my viewers who celebrate that. I wanted to mention that I greatly appreciated everyone who showed up, participated in the chat, or even just watched my Halloween 30,000 subscriber special livestream last week. I really had a great time, and for those of you who won something in the giveaway, I will be sending out your stuff within a week or two. As many of you are aware by the title of today's video, Pennsylvania managed to get more votes by you than any other state. I compiled a complete list of the results, which I should be already showing you right now. Florida was close, but in the end, my home state eventually won. If anyone is curious, no, I didn't plan for PA to win, nor did I include anyone's votes for my house or family. I know that graph is a little confusing, so here is just the top 9 votes for states. I am pretty much going to be following this list as is for the upcoming months, but I may be asking for your opinions when I get to the states that all had the same amount of votes. Also, if you notice, there are 10 missing from the list. Obviously, Illinois and New Jersey are excluded since I already made videos about them, but a total of 8 states, actually and shockingly, had zero votes. So in moving on, I guess being I have lived here my entire life, I better make sure I get everything right. I did want to mention that every time I make a video in this series, I see a lot of comments about missing certain cryptids. While I do try to cover quite a few of the creatures in each state, I never intended for this series to be a complete list. This is only due to me wanting to have cryptids to talk about in a future cryptid spotlight. Without further delay, let's continue on our cryptid road trip, going only a short distance from the last state of New Jersey, and ending in Pennsylvania. As a side note, I promised to keep Bigfoot topics to a minimum this time. I saw a lot of comments about that as well. Pennsylvania is another state that has quite a bit of history behind it, and as of such, it would be impossible to talk about everything here. It was part of the original 13 colonies, and officially became a state on December 12, 1787, making it the second colony to do so. While officially a state, it also is considered a commonwealth, a title that is held by only three other states. This title really doesn't mean much, other than to represent an area looking out for the well-being of the people. However, many point out that it was originally set up as a term that was strongly meant to represent the anti-monarch mentality. The name Pennsylvania actually came to be from the suggestion of King Charles II, and it was a mixture of the words which means Penn's Woods. Many of us know it was named after William Penn, the man responsible for settling a colony here. But few of us realize the name referred to in Penn's Woods didn't refer to him. It actually was being named in honor of his father, who was Admiral William Penn, who had died ten years before the founding of the colony, but he had lent the king money, which he paid back by giving the son land in America. Had the son, William Penn, been given the chance to name the colony, he would have called it New Wales. At some point, I really would like to talk about the state flags, since there are some interesting ones out there, but I am sure you are tired of the history lesson, and I also have a huge number of cryptids to talk about. One small fact though, our flag has many symbolisms on it. But interestingly, the two prominent workhorses on the sides of the crest serve no purpose or symbolism other than to be represented as holding up the crest. Anyway, let's get into the cryptids. When I first started this series, I frequently thought about what cryptids Pennsylvania has, especially since I have lived here and for the fact we really don't have any trademark ones, such as West Virginia has Mothman, New Jersey has a Jersey Devil, Massachusetts has the Dover Demon, and so on. Much to my surprise, and delight, I found we actually have over 15 different cryptids that are said to roam about the state. Don't worry though, I won't go into depth about all 15, since that would be a three-part video. Starting off, Pennsylvania has quite a few lake monsters, and I want to talk about four of them, but in doing so, I am planning on lumping them all together in a way. Two are fairly famous, while the other ones are in a territory that I love, which is Obscure Cryptids. A creature that I mentioned briefly in my Illinois video was called the Ogwa, and that is said to live in the Monongahela River. 
It has been sighted as far back as the 1700s up until recently. This creature has a few descriptions, with some saying it is a turtle, while others say it looks like an alligator. In some retellings, the turtle form actually has two heads. The turtle form is the most common description though. It is said to be 20 feet in diameter, and at one point it is reported to have a tail that is over 15 feet long. It lives in caves deep in the water, and will make its way to the banks of the river, just waiting for a hapless victim to approach. Its meals can be anything really, but it seems to prefer deer and the occasional human. Once it gets a hold of its prey, it will drag it into the water, drowning it, and then proceeds to devour the body whole with its massive jaws. Sometimes it will use its enormous tail to smack its prey with. During the nighttime, it will crawl onto the land and wait on a deer trail for a quick meal. According to the legend, locals did manage to kill one with clubs, and it was said to weigh in at over 400 pounds. This apparently wasn't the only one, since two different fishermen in the 1980s claimed to have seen the beast as it swam under the water's surface. Another creature was said to inhabit the same river, but this was a half-man, half-fish being known as Manongi. It was said to be a very vicious form of merman, which was said to have attacked many fishermen from the 1930s up until 2003. It was said a police force was set up to investigate the rash of attacks, but it turned up empty-handed. Sadly, in looking into this creature, none of these reports could be found, and much like the Gator Man of New Jersey, the same single article is rehashed over and over. Many assume this creature was actually made up. Moving on, we have two lake monsters that are more in the typical form of the description. One is from Lake Erie, named Bessie, and the other is from Raystown Lake in Huntington County, simply known as Ray. I am not going to talk about Bessie too much here, since it really seems to fall into more of Michigan's lore. So, I guess stay tuned? Now, Ray is a different story, as this lake monster has been spotted in the area since 1962, with some claiming even longer than that, and has been seen up until recent years. The lake itself is 200 feet at its deepest point, and is almost 28 miles long. Ray looks like the typical image of the Loch Ness Monster, a plesiosaur that time forgot. Many point out that this creature couldn't be real due to Raystown being a man-made lake. What I found interesting is that this creature was first spotted in 1962, as previously stated, not in the lake, but in the waters of the dam that was constructed. It then is assumed to have moved into the lake after the dam was destroyed in 1971. The Raystown Ski Club actually considered canceling their water show when Ray was seen multiple times around the ramps that were set up. In 2010, the sci-fi show which I enjoyed, called Fact or Fate, made a whole segment on tracking this creature down based on one of the most famous and intriguing photos of it that was taken on May in 2006. According to sightings, it is said to be around 50 to 60 feet long and is thought to be an herbivore since no carcasses of animals have ever been found. Dwight Beale, the director of Raystown Lake, went on record as saying that they all knew the creature is there and it has been in the waters for a while. Granted, this should be taken with a grain of salt, since this admission could be purely for tourism. Although, I personally believe it may really exist, now that I know it was around before the lake was made. Now we leave the water and take to the sky, since two creatures are said to fly about in the form of a pterodactyl and a thunderbird. In the northern central part of the state, there have been reports of giant birds of legendary size since the 1800s. It certainly fits, when you factor in that most of these birds seem to make their home in the least populated area of the state, and that most all sightings are in the Allegheny National Forest. Descriptions vary, but when in the air, they are said to be two to three times larger than a bald eagle, with some claiming it looks like to be the size of a small airplane. Some eyewitnesses say that the bird stands around four to eight feet tall, a huge discrepancy I know, and can have a wingspan between 15 and 20 feet. They are frequently seen just gliding in the air while hardly moving their wings, and true to Native American lore, they seem to fly towards impending storms. A sighting on September 25, 2001 was reported as a witness was driving on Route 119 and could hear the loud flapping of wings in a thunderstorm. 
Looking out her window, she saw a huge black or gray bird casually flapping as 15 feet long wings, about 50 to 60 feet in the air, while in a storm, and it eventually flew to a nearby tree and rested on a branch, which she reported looked to almost break due to the bird's size. This creature has been said to attack all types of animals, and even has reported to have attempted to take small children. In many counties around the state, there have been sightings of what appear to be a pterodactyl flying around as well. Not much is known about this one, but there is a report from March 18th of 2012 in Fayette County. A man was out walking his dog when he suddenly heard a loud whooshing sound coming from the forest. When he looked up, he saw a reddish-brown creature that resembled a dragon, and was 22 feet long and had a wingspan of 18 feet. The creature had three to four talon-like fingers on the end of its wings, its tail was arrow-shaped, and it had the typical cone coming from the back of the creature's head. Trailing behind it were two extended legs, and the body seemed to have a fin-like membrane along the sides. Now things get more fantastic when he mentioned the eyes and mouth were illuminated with a light orange glow. As it flew away, he claimed it produced a sound that was like a foghorn. While many say they can't exist, and I'm not saying that they do, it is interesting that the similar looking ropen from Papua New Guinea also has been said to produce light as well. In addition to the cryptids I have already talked about, there are a few that I would like to mention as well. Shockingly, the Jersey Devil was included on the list since during the outbreak of sightings in New Jersey, there were a few reports of people on the eastern side of the state seeing the same cryptid flying overhead in what many assume was a trip bound for New York. This theory is also supported when you look into sightings of this creature and that there were reports during the same time frame in New York. Going a step farther, there have been reports of people seeing the Chupacabra around Dauphin County around 2010, although these are said to be the mangy dog variety and not the original reptilian form. Many of my viewers know I don't consider the dog version an actual Chupacabra. Also on this list of honorable mentions, there are, of course, many reports of Bigfoot sightings, including a few different and unique varieties. One of the most famous is the white one that was spotted in 1970, 1973 in Monroe and Beaver County. A video emerged in 2008 from Carbondale, which is in Lackawanna County, and it shows the white Bigfoot in great detail. Many claim the video is authentic, but then there are a lot to say it's fake, as usual but I'm not getting into that here. I originally thought the sightings may have been of an albino Sasquatch, but in the first reports, it had black eyes, which many of us know true albinos, in the animal kingdom at least, normally have red or pink eyes. What makes this interesting is that albino humans can have brown eyes. So, does this lend more credibility to Sasquatch being a relative of humans? Another strange Bigfoot, called the Albert Witch, which is a shorter version of Sasquatch at around 4 or 5 feet tall, has been sighted around Lancaster County for over 500 years or more. Before I get some comments on this, we pronounce it Lancaster, not Lancaster, at least in my area of Pennsylvania. This Bigfoot, outside of being on the shorter side, has reddish brown fur, is very lanky, and has a taste for stealing apples. The Native American Susquehannock tribe were the first to spot this little Bigfoot, and today there actually is a festival held in the area for this cryptid. The name literally means Apple Witch. A lake monster that I was unable to talk about previously due to very little information being known is the one from Pike County in the natural lake Tidiaskung and is simply called Tidi. It was seen in the 1960s and it is said to still be spotted from time to time but with finding no actual reports, it makes me a bit leery. All that is known is that it is said to be very large, have blue and gray scales, and makes its home at the bottom of the lake. If anyone knows any more information, please let me know. I would be remiss not to mention that my home state is also said to have quite a population of dogmen as well. There are some chilling stories about this creature crawling around trying to stalk prey, only to stand up and be around seven feet tall. I probably could make a whole video about them. I did see a lot of claims of a real-life living gargoyle flying about, but they seemed to be tied with Thunderbirds, and for some strange reason, one was mentioned in the Dogman sighting. 
I have no clue how the two could be confused. I will be talking about gargoyles when we get to our Texas video though. As a final note, there is a creature known as a Tommy Knocker, or Knocker for short as well. The problem is that this being falls into the range of myth, and isn't what many of us consider to be a true cryptid. I really need to make that video on the differences between cryptids, myth, and folklore. The creatures were very small, akin to leprechauns or brownies, and they frequently were seen in underground mines. They were green in color and could be both good or bad. When they were good, they led miners to big seams of whatever mineral they were mining. When they were bad, many of their actions, such as collapsing a tunnel, led to the loss of human life. Many miners claimed these creatures worked alongside workers, and many of the men would even leave them food, since in not doing so, it was considered very bad luck. The name came from the sound of knocking being heard before a mine collapsed. Of course, these beings were said to be behind that sound. So in ending this video, I was curious if you had heard of any of these cryptids living in PA before. I am really curious if anyone realized just how many cryptids were said to live here, because I certainly didn't expect it. This week, I will not be doing my three comments I like section, since the topic is quite long as is, and not to mention my last video was a live stream. Don't worry, I am still adding three comments at the end of my videos, but only when I am permitted by time frame to do so. Next month, we will continue our road trip in Florida. If you haven't yet done so, do please consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this, and also it would be greatly appreciated if you could share my videos with someone you know who may be interested in this type of genre. With that, be safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Later!